So, Deep Rock Galactic, as you probably, hopefully know, is an online multiplayer shooter, which revolves around being thrust into the depths of a godforsaken, but otherwise mineral-rich planetoid under the hire of a dubiously ethical, but otherwise well-paying mining company, Deep Rock Galactic. For this company, you undergo missions, which all usually revolve around you, and at least three other dwarfs, either slash or collecting minerals and fighting bugs. And flying bugs. And robots. And evil plants. And living minerals that are actively trying to kill you. Infectious plagues that come down on meteors. Those grabby guys from Half-Life are there. They suck. Actual ghosts. Uh, and bees. Sometimes, sometimes you get to fight bees. And with the nature of it being an online-centric, team-based game, when I'm not playing it with my good friends, I'm usually queued up with randoms. Now, this usually isn't an issue. Deep Rock is known for having one of the most welcoming and lovely online communities out there. And even when I'm not paired up with other experienced dwarfs, I can usually carry a full team of Greenbeards pretty comfortably on something like Has4, regardless of the mission type. All except for one. Industrial Sabotage. Now, I don't mean all of Industrial Sabotage. Finding, setting up, and protecting both hacking pods usually goes pretty smooth. No, the part I notice usually gets people comes at the end. The fight with the caretaker. Now that's somewhat understandable. Most boss fights in Deep Rock Galactic are pretty tough, especially the caretaker. If you're not careful fighting this thing, you can end up dead fast. However, through my time playing, and picking up strategies from players much, much more talented and creative than I am, I've collected and adopted some pretty simple and effective strategies. Strategies that can make fighting this thing a million times easier, or can even straight up trivialize the fight. These strats work with any build, although later we'll get into some that are class specific. So, first off, and this is probably the most important one, Supply Pod Placement. Now, the Nitra generation in this mission type is super generous to say the least. You can end up calling down at least three pods during the hacking setup and have at least six more ready to call down during the actual fight. And since the Caretaker is the last leg of the mission and you're probably going to spend most if not all of your Nitra on this final fight, most players seem fit to just spam them, running around and plonking them down in the open air without rhyme or reason. Now, unless you're a gunner with a bubble shield handy, you're likely not going to be able to grab a resupply without getting completely shredded by laser fire, which winds up with you and your team not being able to refill ammo or heal mid-fight. Now what you want to do is, you want to plant your resupply pods strategically. And when I mean strategically, I mean behind cover. Look around the boss room look for any natural forming pillars or crystals jutting out of the wall, anything like that. Now I know you may be asking, but what if my cave doesn't have any natural forming cover? What then? Well then look no further than the cave segment entrances, whether it be the ones heading toward the old power stations, or the ones leading back to the drop pod landing zone. These are fantastic for cover. And don't be afraid to bury them deep in there too if you really need to. There is no limit to how far you can be away from the caretaker during the fight. The only couple of things you have to watch for all the way out there are phase bombs, shredders, and the occasional rogue tentacle or patrol bot. While we're on the topic of cave generation, that brings us to our second topic, cave generation. Before we go forward, however, I do realize that the rest of these strategies only apply to the vent phase and when it comes down to actually shooting it in its giant red eye, you are going to have to play it mostly as the bullet hell it was intended to be. But from what I've experienced, the vet phase seems to be what trips up players the most, so I think it's worth it to focus mostly on that phase specifically. So, when it comes down to the first and, in my opinion, most annoying phase, the one where you have to shoot its glowing yellow vents, there's a lot of creative ways you can approach this phase to make it much easier for yourself. While most people opt to approach the fight like a bullet hell, running around, dodging tentacles and push walls, 
I find it much easier simply to just bunker up and take shots at the thing from a more protected area. You see, the key is to find an area higher than the caretaker itself, as the moving shields, which are probably the most obnoxious part of this phase, are only about as high as the caretaker itself. This really helps in making the fight a lot easier, as bunkering up in a high up, hard to reach place means the main threats of the fight that force you to constantly be on the move are both pretty much just countered, leaving you with much more time to plan your shots or just refill your health and ammo in peace, while at the same time significantly speeding up the pace of the fight, not having to wait every few seconds for its obnoxious sealed push attack to end. Just a simple altitude adjustment allows you to set the pace of the fight, not the caretaker. This also somewhat works with cave generation that allows you to go below the caretaker, although this mostly is just for having a safe bunker to resupply, considering you're not going to be able to shoot the top of the caretaker super effectively from all the way down there. Now onto our last category, class specific strategies. Before we go forward, in regards to our two earlier points, cover and high ground, the engineer and driller, with their unique abilities, allow you to alter the terrain to create scenarios and setups the natural cave generation may not lend to you. You want cover from tentacles so you can resupply safely? Go and make some. You want high ground so you can shoot down on the caretaker without having to deal with the shield walls? Go and make some. For you and your team. So like, did you know you can just sort of stand on top of this thing? Yep, the top of the caretaker is solid ground, and every class has the means to make its way to the top of it. Although, some classes benefit from this fact more than others. I'd say the gunner is the class who benefits from this the least, considering his one solo movement option is slow and draws enemy fire onto him as well as the shield tending to phase through the top of the caretaker half the time you throw down, and him just overall being much more comfortable at the mid-range rather than being up close and personal. Overall, Gunner's just better off keeping his distance. Engineer is a bit of a different story. He has the means to get himself, not to mention his entire team, right above the stupid thing, and while he does have the option to just jump right on top of it, he's honestly a lot better off just hovering right above it and pecking at it from a safe distance. But, having a ramp leading right above the thing is especially effective for one class in particular, the Driller. While you might think that's because he excels at close range combat, which he most certainly does, and the Driller does appreciate having a more convenient means of getting up close and personal with an enemy so far off the ground, but this is where a simple little tool can break this fight right in half. Literally. Of course, I'm talking about the satchel charges. While plunking down a shield on top of the caretaker might be a 50-50, planting a satchel charge right in the position where its detonation can damage all of the vents is super easy, not to mention devastating. You can clear the vent phase in as little as two explosions. And the best part about this is, you don't even need to have a friendly engineer to help build a ramp. The driller can make this setup himself. Just simply dig up through the wall, into the roof of the arena, be careful to make a small hole just where the center of the caretaker should be, and then you're all set. Although to effectively do this for all phases, you are going to have to take a couple of trips to the supply pod. A driller might just want to consider just snagging one for himself, but considering most industrial sabotage missions leave you with more nitro than you know what to do with, I'm sure your team wouldn't mind especially when it comes down to effectively being able to skip three phases of a six-phase boss fight. The one class that does especially benefit from being able to ride this merry-go-round of death is the Scout. Getting on is literally as simple as using the grappling hook, and it's such a game-changer. Being able to get up close and personal with the vents for big damage, power striking the vents for even bigger damage, and being able to avoid the shield push attack for free. Although, there are three things you need to keep in mind. First off, the most immediate threat is the fact that, similar to being on a zipline, being on top of the caretaker makes you a top priority for most nearby enemies. The tentacles especially love doing their huge stab attack at you. 
but just by paying attention to the sound cue, you can just as easily hop off the caretaker to dodge and hop right back on as if nothing happened. The second thing you need to keep in mind are the attacks the caretaker gains in between phases. Phase bombs, shredders, and sniper turrets. It's no problem at all when you get phase bombs. In fact, it's actually great as the bombs cannot spawn on top of the caretaker. Which is especially great, because I fucking hate phase bombs. But what you do need to watch out for are shredders and sniper turrets. Especially sniper turrets, as they have a much easier time shooting you and will aggro you, just as the tentacles do. Just hop off and make sure they're all taken care of before hopping back on the saddle. And this next and last one might be a little bit silly, because it's a video game, so... You know, you probably don't want to die in general, but you really don't want to die on top of this thing. Because if you do, there's no real safe way of getting up there and reviving you, unless a friend has the field medic insta-revive. So basically, you die up there, and you end up being out for the entire fight. While I could see people argue that the engineer method is a bit risky, getting so close to the damn thing, and it eating up a lot of their platforms, and I could see people arguing while the driller strategy may be super effective, it also comes at the cost of a bit of setup time and a somewhat selfish cost of resources. I'd say scout players should be doing this strategy like 90% of the time. It's easy, it's flexible, and the only real downside is the whole accidentally dying on top of it thing. But in my use, even when I'm being super reckless, this almost never happens. And, uh, yeah, that's basically all the tips I have. Hopefully you found it all relatively useful and straightforward. Oh, and remember, these are just tips and tricks in the broadest sense. With Deep Rock's level of customization, there's a whole world of optimization out there if you so choose to pursue it. So don't be afraid to experiment a little. Put your own twists on some of the strategies I have offered. And on that topic, hey! If you already have some strategies of your own, or, or think my strategies could be optimized in any way, leave a comment. I'd love to see what some of you guys came up with. But hey, that's enough out of me. While I do have some other ideas for other strategy-related videos in this game, uh, I'm not really sure when I'll get around to making them. But for now, just expect about anything on this channel. See ya.